So thank you so much, Mr. Ibrahim. Uh, it's an honor and privilege to be part of the African Students and Youth Summit. It is being held virtually due to, to the COVID-19 pandemic, which has affected our continent and the world at large. Once again, thanks so much to the speakers who spoke before me. That is uh, Roy and Raymond. Uh, I am with the Zimbabwe Youth Champions for Agenda 2063 here in Zimbabwe, and uh, we are pushing for the implementation and localization of the Agenda 2063, which hopes and I uh, envision to see an inter integrated, prosperous, and uh, peaceful Africa, a continent which is robust, which is uh, there to stand at the global level. So firstly, uh, in Zimbabwe, as uh, Zimbabwe Youth Champions for Agenda 2063, we've been uh, raising awareness and doing advocates uh, to make sure all young people in the country and across Africa get to know what is Agenda 2063, what we are talking about, what, you are, what we intend to do as young people, because as young people, we are the drivers of this agenda. It is a youth agenda. And we are talking of uh, 43 years from now. And as youth, we expect 43 years from now, which is 2063, will be there to be accountable for what we would have done to make sure that this agenda is achieved. So basically, in an effort to make sure that um, we, we find new pathways to engage young people productively, I've just programmed my speech uh, into three phases. So firstly, what I think should be done uh, by, by the continent or by even our our heads of states and governments, our presidents, our leaders, is to, to tap energy uh, from the young people because you find with the, within the young people, there's a lot of uh, innovation, technology, a lot of ideas which, we, which, can take, which can take or transform our continent and as well as our countries to a better level. So, uh, 10 years from, uh, like, to go back 10 years from 2010 up to date, uh, we have come up with uh, many policies which talk about youth participation and inclusion, but these policies have not been working. And still today, we talk of greater inclusion of young people in public service because there's a gap between those in leadership and the young people. And young people are the majority because as we are foreseeing 2063, we're talking of a, a scenario where we'll be having our population 3 billion Africans by 2063, and the young people are the greater are the greater population by then. And over 70, over 75 percent of our our population in Africa are below the age of 35. Hence, the need to make sure we tap the energy within the young people. So, what we should do first in Africa and Zimbabwe is to review our policy architecture. Because our policies have been there for so long, but they are not being effective enough to make sure that young people are included in police making, in decision making. If you were to see uh, the number of uh, cabinet ministers in Zimbabwe or anywhere in Africa, we see that there is a space or a gap for young people and yet we are the majority. So there's need to review our policies going forward. For us as a, as a country, is Zimbabwe of 2030, uh, where we'll be in upper middle economy, by 2030, and for that to happen, there is need for young people to be included in the initiative, in the drive. In the young people, we constitute each and every space or sphere that we talk of uh, agriculture, mining, tourism. A lot of young people are there. And if we leave young people, then we have a problem because we are the, we are the majority. We should determine where we are going as a as a, as a country or as a continent. And uh, I'm happy the African Union Youth Envoy through uh, Ms. Aya Chebi 
and uh, the African Union Commission uh, with uh, His Excellency uh, Muhammad Musafaki. They launched the initiative uh, called the African Plan of Action for Youth Empowerment, which is running from 2019 to 2023, which speaks to four E's, which we think is a, is a continent. Young people offered with those four E's will be able to make sure that we have greater inclusion of young people in public space, in police making and as well as decision making because young people need one, education, two, employment, three, engagement and as well as uh, entrepreneurship. And recently, um, when we started our lockdown here in Zimbabwe, uh, end of March 2020, we realized that most of our young people were affected in terms of education because school activities, polytechnics were closed. Also, we realized that uh, in our country, which are uh, employed informally and uh, the survival in to mouth. And when we were enforced with the lockdown, many young people went home and uh, they were now in a position where they had to survive on one, one meal per day. And uh, in some instances, we would see others would, would not even have such a meal to, to feed on, on a single day. So uh, through the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Recreation, there was an offer for the Youth Relief Fund, which was given to young people who had uh, been affected in terms of their organizations or businesses. And this Youth Relief Fund went a long way in assisting young people to make sure that they can get something to, to feed for themselves, for their families, and to restructure and rebrand their businesses to be formal because most of the business of young people were informal. And uh, we saw through the initiative, uh, uh, through the Zimbabwe Youth Council, young people were now being assisted to register their business formally as a private, private business corporation, PBCs. And this went a long way in normalizing and pushing young people in the entrepreneurial journey because we realized young people were now in a position to manufacture sanitizers, uh, as well as uh, other detergents which were there to be used to, to fight the pandemic COVID-19. So for that, we appreciate the government. And what we now need is for young people to be there to decide what we want these young people because there are a lot of gaps or areas which have been left behind because young people also need to be there uh, when you talk of uh, key positions in government. Recently, we're talking of a position where those in, uh, in position of influence start to groom young people who they, they, they will be advising whom they will be mentoring such that when a certain person in a position leaves that position, there should be a young people who is willing to take over the position to carry, to carry forward with the work or with the duty when that, that older person will, be no long, will no longer be there. Also, the other thing which I think uh, is, is key or crucial as we enable or engage young people productively in our continent and uh, in Zimbabwe is uh, the youth to have a critical mind, the youth critical citizenry. Because uh, for so long we find we need to beg young people to go and vote, to cast a vote. And yet that vote is that which is going to determine a clinic, a school, in a constituency, in a community. So I think we should now uh, move away from uh, the patronage politics where young people, we need to be begged to go and vote to go and cast our votes as well as uh, when we have uh, maybe an event uh, on agenda 2063 or on sustainable development goals. And these are the two critical agendas which we discussed uh, in Victoria Falls recently in uh, February to align our continent and the world to where we want to go. And young people need to be begged by maybe incentivized to, to come to an event of, of which that event is beneficial to young people. We need to get away with that culture. We need young people who are critical, who are, who are custodians of the developmental issues because Article 26A of the African Youth Charter speaks to young people taking ownership of their own development. It is not anyone from Europe, from America, or from Asia, or from China, from Russia, who is going to come to take charge or ownership of the development of Africa because we know where we want to go as a continent and for that, young people should be custodians of these developmental agendas and issues. And we should now implementing this. And our curriculum is, uh, as Africa should change. 
our education system as we speak to SDG number four, quality education. Young people need to have the education which produces goods and services. We are now in the fourth industrial revolution. We are talking of the artificial intelligence, the internet of things, the robotics. And as a continent, we know we've been back uh, behind for so first industrial revolution. And for that reason, we should benefit from this fourth industrial revolution. And whatever we are doing as a continent, as a country, as a people, let's move forward. Let's embrace technology. Let's embrace the industrialization which is taking place because that is the new way of doing things. And that will see us going forward to Agenda 2063 in 43 years to come. Uh, another thing, uh, lastly, is the our government's willingness to provide uh, the space or the environment for young people to explore or to, to show what we can do. Uh, we are calling upon uh, African governments, our personal governments here in Zimbabwe and across the, the, the continent to create an environment which is uh, peaceful and uh, friendly, such that as young people, we are there to show what we can do. We are given the environment which will enable us to do innovation, to do industrialization, to show what we can do that will make us go forward and ensure development in our continent. And uh, another thing uh, which we, we, we see uh, as a positive uh, move and which, is, which we have embraced as Zimbabwe Youth Champions for Agenda 2063 is um, they recently launched uh, the, the Africa Fact Book, which was launched by uh, the Institute of African Knowledge. Uh, that book is a good book, and it entails what Africa is like from a Pan-African uh, perspective. And uh, for so many times or so long, our story as Africans has been written or told by the, the Europeans or other races. But now the Africa Fact Book gives us a chance to know what is Africa like? To know what happened back then. And today we are, we are, we are honored that um, our president, uh, His Excellency uh, President Idi Mnangagwa, managed to do the groundbreaking ceremony for the Pan African Museum, which is meant uh, to be built here in Zimbabwe, which will be housing uh, all what happened during the African liberation struggle in our continent, in Zimbabwe, in Ghana. So. It's a positive move, which we need to embrace as young people, because aspiration five of the agenda 2063 speak to a strong united Africa, which is a common heritage, ethics and values. And for that reason, agenda 2063 is critical and we should drive agenda 2063 as young people. And uh, I hear a lot of uh, work which has been spoken by uh, Raymond, which they are doing in terms of the healthy, the sector in Uganda and as well as Roy in Kenya. That is a good work. I applaud such. And what we now need, we now need to uh, collaborate to move forward. Because many, many times we, we will be doing um, things which are similar 